All right, let's take a look at how you can use the UART Express VI to transmit and receive character strings, including special characters and formatted text. Look under the My Rio palette and find the UART. You can designate whether you're using the UART on connector A or connector B, and you can also designate whether or not you are doing a write or read operation. I've got my Rio set up with this loopback test. I've connected the transmit output to the receive input. Now, for the version that's set up to do the writing, this is the one that controls the TX output. I'll create this character control. And then after that, I'm going to do a duplicate here. I did a control and then a mouse click on that one to do the drag and copy. I'm setting this up to read all available characters. Let me create a character indicator for this one. Now each of these has a buffer associated with it. What I'm doing with the time delay is allowing a, a little bit of time, in this case 100 milliseconds, to ensure that the transmitted characters are picked up into the buffer associated with our received characters. And then I've got the second UART set up to then read out all of the available characters from that buffer. Let's give this a try. Do the classic hello world test. And we transmitted those out one with one ExpressVI and then read it with the other. Let's try a different string. All right, that works just fine. Now let's try some other possibilities here. If you use the backslash codes display, then you can see all of the characters, including things like spaces and tabs, carriage returns, line feeds, all of these can be specified this way. And of course, you can also display these codes on the indicator. Try backing up a little bit. Also mention that with the backslash codes, if you type a pair of characters in uppercase that represent hexadecimal codes, that's a way to get hidden or special characters to be inserted as well. Here I've typed in the hex codes for the euro mark and the cent symbol. Now, hex display is going to display every single character in hexadecimal. This way, if you know specifically the hex codes for your ASCII characters, you can simply enter those directly. Here's the ASCII codes for copyright, registration, and plus minus sign. Now, let's look under the string palette, and I'll thumbtack that one down here. You'll notice that you have a wealth of built-in sub-VIs to work with strings. You have some conversions going from numerical values to strings, and you also have some that can carry you from byte format back to character string and so on. I'd like to spend a little more time taking a look at this format into string sub-VI. Go ahead and create a constant up there. Let me show you how this works. For example, we could type in a string, the temperature is, and then percent %f means insert a variable parameter and then follow it up with the constant degrees. So we want this to look like the temperature is such and such degrees. I'll create a numerical input here, dial up some comfortable temperature in Fahrenheit, 74.3. Take the output of format into string and then send that out the UART. All right, here we see the received string. If you want to restrict the number of digits a little bit, we could go ahead and say, let's go with a total of four characters and then one after the decimal point. All right, that looks a little better. Now you can do quite a bit with this string formatting. I'm looking at the help page right now and especially draw your attention to the fact that you can have multiple inputs, as many as you like. 
and then the format string details are listed out right here. You'll recognize the percent was right up there at the top, but here's the variety of parameters that can be inserted. And you can go with floats versus integers. You can even insert additional strings and so on. It's a very flexible sub-VI.